Hey, morning everyone. I guess I've got technical difficulties because I didn't realise it wasn't working. It said live this morning, so I'm just going to run through the service again, then we'll post it and you can all look at it later as you wish to. I'm really sorry for the delay because I really thought I've... In fact, I've just done the service, so we'll have to see it a second time. So morning everyone. Hope you're all doing well. Um, let me just see if I can manage to somehow prop this camera up and make it work and you'll have to figure it out. Yeah. So I'm going to prop it up like so. Thanks Rob, by the way, for letting me know that it was uh, not working. Uh, this is going to be tricky. What we need is a prayer book. Prayer books are the answer to this. So you're going to have to have it the wrong way around today because for some reason Marie's phone will let me do this and mine apparently won't. Ah, okay. How are we doing? All right, so we're solid. Morning, everyone. Oh, I think I'm going to write the cameras again as well. I'm turning the microphone. Hey, does that work? Good morning, everyone. Thanks, Rob. Yeah, so there's not going to be a huge number of people. Oh, there's 10 people. Okay. So, sorry I'm late, everyone. Uh, I've actually run through the service. I thought I was live because it said I was live, but apparently I wasn't. So, um, uh, so the second time around is going to be fantastic. So first, just the notices before we get, we get going. Uh, as you know, Marie is, uh, Marie is camping today. So she's... Um, She's enjoying the peace of the, the campsite. Uh, so I think we're going to appreciate the value of the music and the meaning that goes with it. Um, actually, it would have been pretty easy to choose songs for today with uh, some good, good, good readings. Uh, secondly, um, thanks to Ardy, who even on her birthday came in and emptied buckets and sorted out um, the, the terrors of the roof and uh, our leaking roof and, and rain. Uh, it wasn't great in here on whenever it was Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday with all the rain that we had. So, thanks to her. Um, it feels a bit like talking in a vacuum here. I haven't even got Marie to kind of glance across on and make sure we're, we're even alive. So, um, apologies for any kind of stiltedness. It's just a bit weird, that's all. Uh, thank you for the people who did the flowers. It was lovely to smell them when I came in. It, it, they smell even above the smell of dampness from the week. And then two diocesan notices. Firstly, congratulations to Tagir Yan, who, who got uh, ordained this week. And secondly, tonight, I, th I think it's this evening or this afternoon, in the cathedral is the, the Pride service online, which uh, Leanne has done lots of work putting together. So um, those are the notices from the diocese. So today's, today's service is, is really straight morning prayer, um, straight from the prayer book, and with just a short reflection after the gospel. And, and that's it. It takes, I can tell you, it takes precisely 21 minutes because, uh, cause as I said, I've done it. All right, so we start with the confession and then there's some psalms and the readings and then the prayers at the end. When the wicked man turneth away from his wickedness that he hath committed and doeth that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul alive. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. Rend your heart and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. O Lord, correct me but with judgment, not in thine anger, lest thou bring me to nothing. And the general confession. Dear friends, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, 
and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice into the throne of the heavenly grace, saying with me, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord, and grant us, most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may ever hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, for the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and hath given power and commandment to his ministers, to declare and pronounce to his people, the impenitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent, and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance, and his Holy Spirit, that these those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. And then the Venite, Psalm 95. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation, and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways, and to whom I swear in my wrath, that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Old Testament is from the Book of Kings, 1 Kings, chapter 19, verses 9 to 18, and tells the story of Elijah hearing God's voice. He got up, ate, and drank his fill, and set out. Nourished by that meal, he walked forty days and nights, all the way to the mountain of God, to Horeb, when he got there, he crawled into a cave and went to sleep. Then the word of God came to him. So, Elijah, what are you doing here? I've been working my heart out for the God of the angel armies, said Elijah. The people of Israel have abandoned your covenant, destroyed the places of worship, and murdered your prophets. I'm the only one left, and now they're trying to kill me. Then he was told, go, stand on the mountain at attention before God. God will pass by. A hurricane wind ripped through the mountains and shattered the rocks before God, but God wasn't to be found in the wind. After the wind, an earthquake, but God wasn't in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, fire, 
but God wasn't in the fire. And after the fire, the gentle and quiet whisper. When Elijah heard the quiet voice, he muffled his face with his great cloak, went to the mouth of the cave and stood there. The quiet voice asked, So, Elijah, now tell me, what are you doing here? Elijah said it again, I've been working my heart out for God, the God of the angel armies, because the people of Israel have abandoned your covenant, destroyed your places of worship, and murdered your prophets. I'm the only one left, and now they're trying to kill me. God said, Go back the way you came through the desert to Damascus. When you get there, anoint Azael, make him king over Aram. Then anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, make him king over Israel. Finally, anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, from Abel Mehloa, to succeed you as prophet. Anyone who escapes death by Hazael will be killed by Jehu, and anyone who escapes death by Jehu will be killed by Elisha. Meanwhile, I am preserving for myself seven thousand souls, the knees that have not bowed to the god Baal, the mouths that have not kissed his image. The word of the Lord. And the Gospel today is from Matthew 14, verses 22 to 33. As soon as the meal was finished, he insisted that the disciples get in the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the people. With the crowd dispersed, he climbed the mountain so he could be by himself and pray. He stayed there alone late into the night. Meanwhile, the boat was far out to sea when the wind came up against them and they were battered by the waves. At about four o'clock in the morning, Jesus came towards them, walking on the water. They were scared out of their wits. A ghost, they said, crying out in terror. But Jesus was quick to confront them, to comfort them. Courage, it's me, don't be afraid. Peter, suddenly bold, said, Master, if it's really you, call, call me to come to you on the water. He said, come ahead. Jumping out of the boat, Peter walked on the water to Jesus. But when he looked down at the waves churning beneath his feet, he lost his nerve and started to sink. He cried, Master, save me. Jesus didn't hesitate. He reached down and grabbed his hand, and then he said, Faint heart, what got into you? The two of them climbed into the boat, and the wind died down. The disciples in the boat, having watched the whole thing, worshipped Jesus, saying, This is it. You are God's Son for sure. The Gospel of Christ. Reflecting a bit on the readings, it, it really does feel like we're like the disciples at the moment, just trying to get safely to the other side, uh, even though we don't really know where that is or even what that is. And I don't know what storms there are in your mind, but I know in mine um, that there are many, uh, lots of things that have been the source of stability are threatened, jobs are not secure, church as I've know, known it at least is not there, maybe even the institution of the church with what the stories that have come out of Black Lives Matter and other things. Um, it, it, it's not the institution that maybe we wanted to believe it was or that we, we thought it was. Even on a pragmatic note, the ability to fly and see my parents is, is not easily there. So I, I know that that stability is not around, that there's fear, and that fear can be paralyzing. It's fear that can cause me to say the wrong things, uh, to lash out a bit, to be needy a bit. Um, or to do things that I might regret, and it's it's hard to keep hard to keep solid in that. And 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 I, I wish I, I I wish I could find a way of of hearing that quiet voice rather than the loud voice of the earthquake or the fire or the the, the tempest. And there are so many voices out there trying to tell you to be like this, to be like that, that this is the way to live, that that's the way to live. Um, that it, it, it's, it's bewildering. So I wish I could know what can, could pass on the wisdom of how to ignore those loud and strident wrong voices and how to hear the, the still small voice. And, and I really noticed when I read the reading how, how that still small voice gave, gave such clarity to Elijah that he went there feeling really down and miserable and, and basically they've killed all the other prophets. He's the last one, they're after him. Um, so he's, he's fled. He's fled to the mountain to try and try and meet God to find out what to do, 
And then he hears that small voice and suddenly there's a, a real clarity in his mind as to what his purpose is. Go do this, do this, do this. Um, I, I wish I could tell you how to do that. Uh, and if you know, let me know. Um, I, also, I also wish I knew and could pass on that ability to see God in the storm and to, to call out, um, even to try and step out and meet him. I, I can describe that well, I think, the feeling of sinking, um, but the feeling of, of taking the hand of, of, of saying, well, if you are God, tell me to come, and then actually coming, uh, that's, that's hard to know. What I do know is that when I don't try and do those two things, though, life is definitely worse and, and harder and more difficult. And I take some comfort that Peter was just ordinary. The disciples were ordinary. They were super scared. They saw ghosts instead of Jesus. And of the however many of them there were in the boat, it was only Peter that had the courage to, to try and step out, to call out. And, and even he had to ask for reassurance for that direct command. So his, you know, he, he, he needed help. But still the disciples were there and they were loved and they were cared for and ultimately transformed. And, and I think Jesus' words of take heart or have courage, do not be afraid, I think they resonate today as much as they did on the lake or in that cave. Um, and I guess God knows that paralyzing fear doesn't help and it, it just helps us lose our way actually. And then the second hope we talked about a bit last week, that I take hope and inspiration maybe even from, from actually the sharedness of this whole time and that we're not unique and although the exact threat if you like that we face and the changes that we face are obviously unique and different in some ways but in many ways they're also the same as, as previous generations have had, there have been wars, there have been famines, there have been pandemics, um, institutions have, have risen and fallen uh, and, and without and, and, and people have people have lived through that. They've continued to live lives. They've continued to, to to love and to do the right thing. And maybe my final thought is, without denying the need to earn a living or to worship in a in a communal gathering or maybe even to have a certain style of church, I, I think me as an individual, I have to ask myself um, constantly, maybe whether whether what I consider a certainty and consider a stability is actually the right thing to be held as a certainty. And what really going through what should be considered permanent and what should really be considered transitory and, and not have life built around it. That's just a short reflection on today's readings. Amen. And then we continue with the Jubilate, which is Psalm 100. Again, a bit of a theme of, of worshipping and praising. And, and a few people said, well, why, 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 why even go to church today? And I, I, my answer is, well, it's, it's always been part of the DNA of St Mary's that come rain or shine, we've done our absolute best to make sure that there is worship in this building or in St Mary's at, at 10 o'clock on Sunday mornings or whenever it might be. And, and it, it seemed important to keep that going. So here's Psalm 100. O be joyful in the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Be ye sure that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. O go your way into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth from generation to generation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, 
and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's pray. Pray first for the state of our world, for Beirut, for all those tragically, tragically affected, the homeless, the dead, the suffering. Pray for those who are angry and frustrated and, and, and probably rightly angry and frustrated at the corruption and the lack of leadership and the, the lack of care for them as people. Not just in Beirut, but all around the world. We pray for all those who are in power and authority. That you will give them a real sense of justice and fairness and, and show them how to build a better world. I, th I think, it's, I know it's on all of us, but I think it's maybe particularly on those who are in power to see the world as it is and to, to work it through. We have an opportunity maybe to build a bigger world and I pray that that may be the case. We pray for those who are working in our hospitals and on the front line who are being exposed to COVID must be so tired and dreading the thought of a second wave and the fall and what might happen then. Pray for courage for them and, and resolution for us as well to, to keep doing what we have to do to keep the disease at bay. Pray for teachers and kids as they start to think about going back to school but have no idea what they're going back to. We pray that you'll be with them in that uncertainty. We pray for those who are sick, out loud or in our hearts. And for those who are vulnerable and lonely and even more than the rest of us, wondering when this thing's going to end and what ending might look like. We offer these and all of our prayers to you and close with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. And we close with three colics and the grace. Almighty God, you sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church. Open our hearts to the riches of your grace, that we may bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in love, joy and peace, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The second comment for peace. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom. Defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defence, may not fear the power of any adversary. Through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the third collet for grace. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we may fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance to do always what is righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We close with the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. 
Thank you for joining me for morning prayer. I wish you all a great week and uh, see you next week with music. See ya.